is nine o'clock. We will call to <coughs> order the meeting of the Blue Earth County Board of Commissioners. Those that are able, please join us in the pledge to our flag. <coughs> States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one on our agenda is the agenda review. Mr. Meyer, please. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. I'll move the agenda. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The agenda is approved as printed. Item number three on our agenda is the public <coughs> comment portion of the board meeting. We, uh, on our website, or we, we certainly have that uh, opportunity for citizens to address the board in a public setting as long as advance notice is given by the deadline and it can be put onto the uh, agenda. At this time, I'd like to welcome Mr. Robert Drangler to the podium for his request to provide public comment to the commissioners. Please note this meeting is being recorded and there's a five minute time limit. I've asked the county administrator to give you a one minute warning and let you know when you've used the allotted time. Comments from the public are expected to be civil and respectful. The board will not take action today but will direct county staff to respond appropriately to issues raised. Now please, if you would, state your name and your address for the record. Good morning. Uh, thank you, my name is Robert Drangler. I'm at uh, 411 North Riverfront Drive, Old Town, Minnesota. And uh, is there anybody here in agricultural related that would like a copy of my agenda? Okay. Here we go. This is, uh, all I'm going to do is A, I read my uh, meeting of what I am proposing. Mankato, Minnesota, 56002. 507-340-4310. Good morning, afternoon, Blue Earth County Commission members. I thank you for putting me on the agenda for today's meeting. The pictures I have included in your packets show the Rapidan Dam's currently damaged state, which requires our immediate attention. This historical dam, built in 1910, played a significant role in the early electrification of Blue Earth County. The recent flooding of the Blue Earth River has caused the riverbed to shift around the dam creating a new riverbed and emptying the reservoir. It has also done substantial damage to the adjacent County Road 9 bridge. While causing significant damage, the flood has created a unique opportunity for our community. This opportunity is the creation of the Mary Cato Hydrogen Hub and the Blue Earth County Urea Plant, a crucial step towards a more sustainable and prosperous future for our community. The rapid in dam can be repaired for substantially less than the cost of complete dam removal, and the hydroelectric generators can be upgraded with modem equipment, producing a meaningful amount of green electricity. See the report prepared by Bar Engineering. This green electricity is required to macaw green hydrogen by utilizing electrolysis units to separate the hydrogen from the Blue Earth River water. Hydrogen is the most abundant chemical on Earth and is non-polluting as a fuel. We have attached a picture of an electrolysis unit manufactured in the USA by a firm that has been operating for over 23 years. The Inflation Reduction Act 2022 has allocated $925 million to hydrogen projects in MN, ND, and SD. These three states selected the name, the Heartland Hydrogen Hub. Some of the IRS tax benefits available to this type of project are the monetization of CO45, Q, tax credits by governmental entities to improve a project's financial viability. Often, a syndicate is formed, and the tax benefits are packaged and sold by government entities to taxable businesses. 
This allows a substantial reduction in the cost of a project. We want to become a project location in Minnesota at the Rapidan Dam site in Blue Earth County and propose using green hydrogen to decarbonize urea fertilizer production. Mankato is the center of Minnesota's agricultural production. The urea fertilizer plant would help create numerous jobs and significantly lower the cost of agricultural output for Minnesota farmers, making their operations more sustainable and profitable. This project could boost our local economy by creating jobs and reducing the cost of agricultural production. Green hydroelectric power can also provide power for the development and operation of the urea plant and other nearby commercial and residential developments. This electricity can also power calcining kilns to produce chemicals to sequester carbon One dioxide remaining. from the Mankato Energy Center plant to demonstrate. The power of this technology. We have contacted former MN Senator Dan Sparks of Oritu. Investigate this potential project. Adequate hydrogen production can also provide transportation fuel for the greater Mankato. <clears throat> Population area. This can be a scaled implementation, with a few public transit vehicles being purchased or converted at first. This will help to improve the comfort level and acceptability of this new transportation fuel and allow time for infrastructure to improve its availability. Tearing down the Rapidan Dam will prevent the Blue Earth County communities from realizing this. Opportunity. I am available at. Thank you, and I wish to point out one word. It's the B word. A billion. There's a billion dollars of new money available for hydrogen and right now three states and we are one of them are in this mix. So time is up <coughs> Mr. Chair. Please take a look at it. Uh, I'm here because of citizens voices, citizens voices Howard Vedder, if you remember the flood of 65, he went to Washington and lobbied for our dike, Citizens Voices. We got the dike. That was big. Uh, Time is up, sir. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, forward both uh, the letter and the, the PowerPoint uh, information to staff, and you will... Uh, be uh, responded to under your concerns. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your time Thank today. You. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to uh, recess the board meeting so we can call to order the Economic Development Authority meeting. Uh, entertain a motion to recess. So, so moved. Second. second. A motion and a second. We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. We are recessed and we will. Go to item number four. We will call to order the Economic Development uh, Authority meeting. And the first item is the agenda review. Mr. Meyer, please. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. I'll move the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? <clears throat> We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. <clears throat> the agenda is approved as printed. First item number three, tab one, is the minutes of September 10th. What is your pleasure? I'll move the minutes. Second. And a motion and a second. Discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The minutes of September 10th are approved. Item number four, tab two, capital improvement project. Uh, Mr. Katchi, would you please join us? Uh, up here and identify yourself for the record. Go I am uh, Luke Peterson with the oh, city you. of Mankato. I'm okay. here in uh, absence of Mr. Tatchy. All right, morning, Luke. Good, good morning, morning, Luke. Uh, good morning, Chair and members of the board. I'm here to present uh, two bid award resolutions today for public housing units in Blue Earth County. Uh, the first one is for the 311 2nd Avenue Southeast Foundation replacement in Mapleton, Minnesota. 
Uh, two bids were received on Friday, September 13th. Uh, Apex Construction was apparent little bidder with all conforming documents <laughs> with a bid of 50825 uh, architect's estimate uh, on the project was 87811 uh, At this time, staff is recommending the award of this bid. Um, the second project was 121 Agency reno Street Renovation in Eagle Lake, Minnesota. Uh, two bids were also received on this project on Friday, September 13th. Uh, land to Home Development of Nicollet, Minnesota was apparent low bidder. Uh, with all conforming documents with a bid of 87400 um, The architect's estimate on the project was 165841 uh, Staff is also recommending uh, award of this project also. Uh, the, for, the first project that I went over, the foundation replacement in Mapleton, is expected to uh, commence in the spring uh, due to... Uh, um, them probably not being able to get it done this fall yet and the 121 agency rent street renovation is expected to take uh, place in the next couple weeks all right let's uh do these separately i, I would recommend that so Mr. are Chair. there any clarifying questions on the first one 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 or five ones if we have five sixes ranches we should have five one project right? <laughs> okay you got a motion second and a second discussion we're ready to vote all those in favor say aye aye those opposed no motion carried the resolution is approved and let's go to the second one um any clarifying questions no, sir mr peterson no i do <clears throat> second we got a motion and a second discussion we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. That project 11127 bid award is approved. Um, that uh, concludes our agenda. Item number six is to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. We are adjourned. I apologize, Mr. Thank you. Peterson. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will reconvene uh, the uh, board meeting, and we will start with um, uh, actually five hearings we've got this morning, three ditches and then two planning and zoning. Um, we will start with the County Ditch 51 final hearing for the redetermination of benefits. Um, Ryan and Greg. We will look at, uh, um, at that agenda. Mm -hmm. Mr. Meyer, would you review the agenda for Ditch 51, please? Mr. Chair, there are no changes to that agenda. I'll move it. Second. And a motion and a second. Discussion? We're ready to vote. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The agenda is approved as, uh, as printed. Um, the purpose of today's hearing is to present the viewer's report and to receive comments from all <coughs> parties interested in County Ditch 51 redetermination of benefits proceedings. The order of business for the hearing is as follows. Staff will review the jurisdictional documents. We will hear from the appointed viewers, and then we will open the hearing for public comments. I'll ask uh, county staff, uh, Ryan and Craig, to uh, identify themselves and review the jurisdictional documents. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ryan Henniker with uh, Property Environmental Resources uh, Drainage Management. Just before we get going, I was just going to make a quick note um, using a different viewing team, uh, relatively new. You've seen a couple of their documents, but just wanted to make a kind of a high level note that things look a little different. They feel a little different from what we're used to. Um, so going forward, kind of expect the similar look and feel. Uh, starting with CD51. Hearing notices were mailed on August 30th of 2024. Uh, land owner informational meeting was held on August 21st, 2024. Notice was posted outside this building at 204 South 5th Street. Uh, notice the public hearing was also published in the Mankato Free Press on September 3rd, 10th, and 17th of 2024. I also have one quick memo. County Ditch 51 watershed has approximately 495 benefited acres and is primarily located in Ceresco Township. 
On January 23rd, 2024, the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority ordered a redetermination of benefits. Viewers were appointed and ordered to create an updated benefits and damages listing and a viewer's report. A copy of the drafted viewer's report for the redetermination of benefits was submitted to Blue Earth County Drainage Management staff on August 2nd, 2024, with a corrected and updated viewer's report uh, being received as September 20th, 2024. Today's action requested, we request the Drainage Authority adopt the drafted findings in order updating the County Ditch 51 viewers report and benefits and damages report. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you for that. Uh, now it would be appropriate for a motion and a second to accept the jurisdictional documents into the legal record. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. <clears throat> motion carried. Jurisdictional documents are uh, into the legal record. I now will ask the appointed viewing staff to please come, to the, come up to the podium or the table, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, identify yourself and review the viewer's report. All right, good morning. I'm Mark Behrens. I'm one of the viewers that worked on this project along with Westall. I handed out some maps and information about each of the ditches that we're working on. It's on the front uh, uh, wooden part of your yeah, we got bench it. there. That talks about where each ditch is and the information about each ditch. I don't like having my back to the public here. Um, we're members of the Minnesota Viewers Association. There's four or five trainings a year you can go to to become accredited. There's three or four different groups throughout the state that do this viewing. So whether it's our group or one of the other groups throughout the state, the process would be similar on how they determine benefits. We've got an office at my farm in Freeborn County there, and we work in about 10 or 12 different counties in southern Minnesota. There's five items that are used to determine benefits. It's obviously how many acres you have within the watershed, your soil type, your location rate, where your property is physically away from the county open ditch or county tile, whether or not you've got county tile on your property, and the efficiency of the system. Those five items come together to determine a benefit value. Each parcel within the system gets a benefit value, whether you've got a half acre building site or 160 acres of farmland. Each parcel gets a benefit value. We divide your benefits by the total benefits in the system to get your percent of total benefits. So when there's repair or maintenance on the system, obviously the whole bill has to get paid, whether it's a $1,000 bill or a $10,000 bill. Each parcel pays their percent of total benefits times the bill. That would equal what they owe for that project. There's, um, we build a book like this on every single system we work on so that anybody that wants to look at what we did to determine their benefits, we are happy to show them their acres, obviously, location rate, um, soil types. If they want to see their info or their neighbor's info, we're happy to show them how we broke out the parcels to determine benefits. We had a meeting, as Ryan said, with landowners on August 21st. We send out all the info to landowners. All our contact information is on what is sent out, our names, our phone numbers, our email address. So anybody that isn't able to make that meeting is uh, welcome to give us a call. Quite often we meet with people out at the farm. They take us out on a four-wheeler we meet across the kitchen table they will email us uh, info we've got a standard way we determine benefits and then we adjust our benefits up or down depending on what we learn from the landowners at the informational meeting or information that they've given to us a little bit about this county ditch uh, 51 that we're talking about here this first system it's an old system. 
It was built in 1917. Uh, like Ryan had said, there's about 484 acres within that system. It's all county tile. There's no county open ditch. There's about 9,900 feet of county tile. The tile range in size from six inches to 14 inches. Like I said, we determine the benefits for the whole system. The total benefits on this system as we determine them is $670,816 worth of benefits. The numbers get high by ditch law. We have to determine how does that system, how do the parcels benefit from the system over a 25 year period. That's why the benefit numbers get high. This system has not been redetermined since it was established back in 1917. By ditch law, we have to give an estimated assessment for the redetermination of benefits. So all the information that was sent out to landowners has their acres, their benefited acres, their benefits, percent of benefits, in the far right hand column, it's got their estimated assessment for this redetermination of benefits. We just used $4,000 for that estimated assessment. We don't know how much money is in that account. They might be 10,000 in the black. They might be 10,000 in the red. They will assess according to what they need in that account. But just for the redetermination, we threw 4,000 bucks at it and that showed up on all of the uh, Excel spreadsheets that were sent to landowners. So that's kind of a Reader's Digest about this County Dish 51, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Any clarifying questions from board members? No, Mr. Chair. Okay, at this time we'll open the public comment portion of the hearing. If you'd like to make a comment, please come to the podium. State your name and address for the record. Comments from the public are expected to be civil and respectful. Please note this meeting is being recorded. There's a five minute time limit. The county administrator will give you a one minute warning and let you know when you've used your allotted time. In addition, the board may restrict or limit the time allotted to a person whose remarks are repetitive or not relevant to the matter under consideration. Is there anyone wishing to make comments on ditch number 51, CD 51. I'll ask again, is there anyone wishing to make comments on County Ditch 51, redetermination of benefits? And I will ask for a third and final time, is there anyone wishing to make comments for County Ditch 51, redetermination of benefits? Hearing and seeing, no comments. I will close the public portion of the hearing and ask if there's further questions from the board. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair. No questions. If not, it would be appropriate for a motion and a second to accept the drafted findings in order, approving and adopting the viewer's report and benefits and damages report. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The motion carried. Um, the uh, viewer's report, benefits and damages report are adopted. This concludes the County Ditch 51 redetermination of benefits hearing. We will now move into County Ditch 91, final hearing for redetermination of benefits. And uh, the first item is the agenda review. Mr. Meyer, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, there are no changes today. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The agenda for uh, CD 91 is approved as printed. Okay. Uh, again, today's purpose is to present the viewer's report, receive comments, um, on the redetermination of benefits. The order of business will be the same for all three hearings. Jurisdictional documents, then viewers, then public comments. Uh, I'll ask Ryan Hinegar to uh, review the jurisdictional documents. 
Again, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, notices were mailed out to landowners on August 30th, 2024. <coughs> Informational landowner meeting held on August 21st, 2024. Uh, notice of the hearing was published outside of this building at 204 South 5th Street. Public hearing affidavit was published in Mankato Free Press on September 3rd, 10th, and 17th, 2024. Again, a quick memo here. County Ditch 91 watershed has approximately 652 benefited acres and is primarily located in Sterling Township. Uh, on January 23rd, 2024, the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority ordered a redetermination of benefits. Viewers were appointed in order to create an updated benefits and damages listing in the viewer's report. A copy of the draft of viewer's report for the redetermination of benefits was submitted to Blue Earth County Drainage Management staff on August 2nd of 2024 with the uh, most recent updated final draft report received on September 20th, 2024. Today's action requested, we request the Drainage Authority adopt the drafted findings in order, <coughs> updating the County Ditch 91 viewers report and benefits and damages report. That was all I have, Mr. Chair. All right, you've heard the, uh, the report and and we need to do something with jurisdictional documents. I'll move the documents. Second. And a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Jurisdictional documents are into the legal record. At this time, we will ask uh, for the viewer's report. Good morning. Uh, Wes Dahl, one of the viewers, worked along with uh, Mark Barons on these projects. Again, works in the same process that Mark explained earlier on how we did this system and all our systems. So I'll just give you the information and the numbers on this system. County Ditch 91 was established in 1968. It has not been redetermined since it was established in 1968. There's approximately 636 acres of farmland and building sites within the uh, watershed and approximately 15 acres of county and township roads. So there's a total of 651 acres within the system. There is not any open ditch, county ditch system in this uh, system, but it does have county tile. There's approximately 14,000 feet of county tile, ranging in size from 18 inches down to eight inches. Total benefits totaled $1,260,000. $110, and again, that's over the 25-year period. Uh, we used the estimated assessment of $4,000, and again, for that reason, we don't know how much is in the account, so we kind of reuse the estimated number to uh, get sent out to landowners. I'll take any questions if anybody has them. Any clarifying questions on the viewer's report? Nope. At this time, we'll open the public comment portion of the hearing, kind of same uh, song, verse two. You um, need to come to the podium, state your name and address. Um, you know they're going to be uh, civil and respectful comments. You know you're being recorded. You know there's a five minute time limit. You know you're going to get a one minute warning and when you've used the allotted time. You know that we will uh, restrict or limit time that are repetitive or not relevant. So I'll ask that anyone like to make comments on CD 91, redetermination of benefits. Please come to the podium. Is there any, anyone interested in making comments in the public hearing portion of County Ditch 91? And I'll ask for a third and a final time anyone wishing to make comments on County Ditch 91 redetermination of benefits report. Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public comment portion of the hearing and ask if there are other comments from the board and what their wishes are. I don't have any comments or questions, Mr. Chair. Nothing here. Oh. There's no other comments or questions. I would entertain a motion, or I would make a motion to accept the viewer's report. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The County Ditch 91 Redetermination of Benefits uh, report is approved. This concludes County Ditch 91 Redetermination of Benefits. We will now go to Judicial Ditch 20 
final hearing for redetermination of benefits. Mr. Meyer, agenda review, please. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. We have a motion. Second. And a second to approve the agenda. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The agenda is approved as printed. Um, again, this is the viewer's report and received comments on JD20, redetermination of benefits proceeding. The order of business will be the same as the last two. Review jurisdictional documents, hear from the viewers, and then open the hearing for public comments. Craig, is it your turn to get to talk? Yes, it's my turn. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing notices were mailed on August 30th, 2024. Landowner information meeting was held on August 21st, 2024. Notice was posted for the, this hearing outside of the Blue Earth County Historic Courthouse located at 204 South 5th Street, Mankato, Minnesota, 56001. Notice of public hearing was also published in the Mankato Free Press on September 3rd, 10th, 17th, and, and 17th of 2024. Uh, I'll read the memo here. Judicial Ditch 20, watershed is approximately 2,300 92 benefited acres and is located in Sterling and Lyra townships. On November 21st, 2023, the Blue Earth County Drainage Authority ordered a redetermination of benefits. Viewers were appointed in order to create an updated viewers and damages listing for the viewers report. A copy of the drafted viewers report for the redetermination of benefits was submitted to the Blue Earth County Drainage Management staff on August 2nd, 2024. With an updated report, being received on September 20th, 2024. T today we are requesting the Drainage Authority adopt the drafted findings in order updating the Judicial Dish 20 Viewers Report and Benefits and Damages Report. Thank okay. you. You've heard the jurisdictional documents and the memo. What are your wishes with jurisdictional documents? Move to approve. Second. Got a motion and second. Accept the jurisdictional documents in the legal record. Discussion? We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Jurisdictional documents are approved. Uh, next, we will do the viewer's report. All right, thank you. Again, Mark Barron's one of the viewers talking here about uh, Blue Earth JD 20. This one again was established in 1919. It's all county tile. There's no open ditch on this system. There's a lot of tile on here. There's 52,100 feet of county tile that range in size from eight inches to 34 inches. This system eventually dumps into the Maple River in Blue Earth County. As um, Craig said, there's 2,391 acres within this system. Hasn't been redetermined since it was established back in 1919, which isn't uncommon. We work in a lot of different counties. A lot of the systems haven't been looked at for 70, 80, 90 years. So it's, it's time to get the numbers looked at, reviewed, updated. Uh, on the estimated assessment, like Wes talked, on this system, it's a bigger system. We used $5,000 for the estimated assessment that covers some viewer cost. I don't know if there's some any admin, but we have to throw a number at it. That's the number we used for this system was $5,000. Total benefits on JD20, 2,496,000 worth of benefits. Again, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Any clarifying questions from the commissioners? No, sir. Drainage Authority. All right, at this time we will open the public comment portion of the hearing. You've heard it twice, you'll hear it a third time, and two more times if you stay for the planning and zoning hearings. Um, like to make a comment, come to the podium, state your name and address. They'll be civil and respectful. It's being recorded. There is a five minute time limit. You will get a one minute warning and let you know when you've used your time. If the remarks are repetitive or not relevant, 
We may restrict or limit them. And I would ask at this time, is there anyone wishing to make comments on JD20, redetermination of benefits? Is there anyone wishing to make comments for Judicial Ditch 20, redetermination of benefits? I'll ask for a third and final time if there's anyone that would like to make comments on JD20, redetermination of benefits. Seeing and hearing none, I will uh, close the public comment portion of the hearing and ask if there are further questions from the board. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair. No questions. Then it would be appropriate uh, to accept the drafted findings in order, approving and adopting the viewer's report and benefits and damages report. I'll move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? No discussion, Mr. Chair, but I'd just like to thank the viewers and the landowners that participated in the public uh, informational meetings. That's always very helpful. I think we get a lot of work done there. This looks relatively simple here, but there's a lot of work that gets done sure. way before this, so I appreciate all the staff and the members that helped get that done. Mr. Chair. Thank you for those comments, and I would certainly agree. Uh, it's always good to see familiar faces back. It's a lot easier if we get any hiccups taken care of before the official public hearing. So we appreciate uh, those that took time out twice to come, landowners meeting and to the final hearing. All right, are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The uh, viewers report, benefits and damages report is approved. This concludes the JD20 predetermination of benefits hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We'll kind of reorganize and then we will go to item number eight on the agenda, tab number five <coughs> under planning and zoning. Morning, John. Good morning, Good morning John. Morning. Okay, we'll go to uh, planning and zoning. The staff are here to present their action item. This is a public hearing. Public comments will be allowed in just a moment. Comments from the public are expected to be civil and respectful. As a note, this meeting is being recorded. There is a five minute time limit. County Administrator will give you the one minute warning and let you know when you've used your allotted time. In addition, the board may restrict or limit the time allotted to a person whose remarks are repetitive or not relevant to the matter under consideration. So at this time, I'll ask planning and zoning staff to introduce themselves for the record and the item before the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. John Considine, Zoning Administrator. Our first item this morning uh, for consideration is PC 35-24. It's a request for review and approval from Ryan Wiwi and Robert and Marjorie Schmiesing uh, for an after the fact interim use permit for adding fill to a bluff impact zone and an area of shoreland. The property is zoned agricultural and is in the shoreland of the Blue Earth River, which is classified as an agricultural river by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. The site is located in the northwest quarter of the northeast quarter of Section 26 in Vernon Center Township. At the Planning Commission, staff presented the report. Uh, the applicant stated he met with the Public Works Department and the contractor before starting the project. He stated he did not think he was breaking any ordinances uh, he had received approval for the access agreement from the Public Works Department. He also stated he might not be present at the county board meeting this morning, so he may not be in attendance, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the Planning Commission had no questions or concerns or comments. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward a recommendation of approval to the county board based on the findings and conditions recommended by staff. And the board action this morning would be passage of the resolution based on the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, any clarifying questions for staff? No, sir. At this time, we'll open the public comment portion of the hearing. Anyone wishing to make a comment regarding PC 35-24, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Is there anyone wishing to speak to PC 35-24? I'll ask again, anyone wishing to comment? I'll ask for a third and final time 
Anyone wishing to comment on PC 35-24? Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public comment portion and return it back to the board. Other questions uh, or comments from the board? No question. I would move uh, resolution based on the recommendation and by the Planning Commission. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those fa in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried. It is approved. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, our second and last item here this morning for planning and zoning is PC 36 24. It's a request for re review and approval by Dustin J. and Jessica A. Burchart and Brian Wellborn for an interim use permit to operate an agricultural equipment business as level two home occupation. The property is zoned agricultural and is in part of the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 17 in Decoria Township. At the Planning Commission, staff presented the report. The applicant was present and available to answer questions from the Planning Commission. He was asked if he had any issues with the added condition related to the access points and he stated he did not, and there were no comments from the public. Members of the Planning Commission had no further questions, concerns, or comments. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward a recommendation of approval to the County Board based on the findings and conditions recommended by staff. The Board action this morning for this item would be passage of the resolution based on the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, any clarifying questions? Seeing none, we'll open the public comment portion of the hearing. If you'd like to make comments regarding this, PC 36-24, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Anyone wishing to speak to this? Asking if there's anyone wishing to comment in the public uh, portion of the hearing. And I'll ask for a third and final time, anyone wishing to comment on PC 36-24. Seeing and hearing none, we will close the public comment portion. Return it to the board. Any comments from the board? No, sir. Okay. I'll move the resolution based on the recommendation of the Planning Commission. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion carried, PC 36-24 is approved. This concludes the planning and zoning items. Thank you. Thank John. you, John. Thanks, John. Have, have a good day. We will go to item number nine, tab number six, the heavy duty on-road truck replacement grant. Morning, Jason. Morning. How are you doing? Morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Please identify yourself for the record, Jason. Jason Stephan, Ponderosa Landfill Supervisor. Is Mark out in the... Uh, are we waiting for Mark? Or, uh, no, I think you can go ahead, okay. Mr. Chair. Right. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Uh, Blue Earth County is committed to protecting the public, wildlife, and the environment. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, or MPCA, is aiming to reduce diesel emissions, improve air quality and public health by removing older diesel vehicles and equipment from operation and replacing them with new, less polluting models. The MPCA is currently accepting submissions for a heavy duty on-road vehicle replacement grant. Public, private, and nonprofit facilities such as the Ponderosa Landfill may apply for up to 25% of eligible project costs per organization to replace current high emission equipment with new lower emission diesel vehicles. This program will be awarding approximately $4.4 million in grants until funds are depleted. These funds may also be combined with other programs such as the IRS dispersed tax credits, such as the commercial clean vehicle credit, or the alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit. This, the grant program requires the county to cover 75% of the total project costs. The grant amount awarded will be based on multiple factors, including total emissions reduced, age of vehicle replaced, idle hours reduction, and area of impact. All projects must be completed by December of 2027. 
The department has budgeted $200,000 in 2026 for the purchase of a new roll-off truck with an estimated completion date of the middle of 2026. Uh, Property Environmental Resources requests approval to make application for the heavy duty on road vehicle grant, the utilization of match dollars not to exceed $200,000, and authorization to enter into a grant agreement if selected for the purchase of a new roll off truck for use at the Ponderosa landfill. All right, you've uh, heard the request. I'll move approval. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair, but this looks like a good program. Uh, but I hope you let me come out and drive one of those big trucks one of these days. I didn't get to drive the new Panther yet. <laughs> there you have somebody so, will. Um, no, I think this is a, a good program. and It would be nice to get some extra funding to help cover the cost of that roll-off truck. And just explain to you real quickly, Jason, what the roll-off truck, that's basically just internal use? Um, in the right now landfill. we use it internally at the landfill to move waste from the customer service building down, down. into the actual landfill um, but we would offer us the opportunity to also remove some of our trucking contract to be able to move some other material locally as well oh nice good great idea thank you mm -hmm. yep. any other discussion are we ready to vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed no motion carried it is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Brunner, I there. would just add that Mrs. Papp would gladly let you drive one of her Are big, big trucks anytime right. when she's going to haul quarter beans. She'll right. give up the steering wheel for you. <laughs> Always looking for truck drivers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jason. Jason. Thanks, Jason. All right. Item number 10, tab number 7, is a CASA 9 bridge removal bid award. Uh, Mr. Tilgis. If you would join us, please. Morning, Ryan. Good morning, Good morning commissioners. Ryan. One action item for consideration today, and that is for the award of the contract to remove the bridge number 07542 on County State at Highway 9. This is obviously the bridge that was damaged during the June 2024 flood, leaving the uh, bridge pier piling unsupported and at risk of um, imminent failure. The report from Stonebrook Engineering has been sh previously shared with the county board for your information. Uh, we've been working through Minnesota Department of Transportation and their representatives with the Federal Highway Administration to utilize FHWA ER or emergency relief dollars for this under an emergency contract. So we've solicited for bids for bridge removal to be completed by January of 2025. We received several bids. Um, the engineer's estimate was at $1,018,100. The apparent low bid was Hosier Worldwide at $1,163,100, with SM Henches and Sons as a second bid at $1,323,100. And you can see we received several other bids um, all the way up to $3.6 million. So quite a, quite a spread. Um, We've not worked with Hosier Worldwide previously. We have been doing some investigating and corresponding with them. Um, our understanding is that the Mr. Hosier that started this company was running the demolition division, with Kate, which is a very large demolition and, uh, construction contractor out of Rogers and has been doing this for 30 years and has provided us with references and things of that nature, as well as equipment that has been responsive to our inquiries and um, with that being said, obviously we have bonds and other measures that go in place for these types of contracts um, to ensure that performance is completed. Uh, so with that being said, we would recommend a word to Hosier Worldwide Inc. in the uh, low bid amount of $1,163,100. I'll move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. I guess I would just ask if, um, if they've had some other Minnesota work done with other county engineers or familiar with or as you've um, looked into they had just other the fact that we haven't used them before. Correct. They had other municipal projects, um, but for like water tower demolition and things of that nature and um, other projects, I think they were taking down some retail spaces and things of that nature, but uh, not with other counties yet. Again, I think they're a fairly new company. Well, if they meet all the guidelines and can meet the bonds. Yeah, I don't have a reason homework. not to yeah. award to Do them, so I think that's sure the 
good references. Yeah, it's it's, it's a different situation to be put in, but in the same breath, I don't know that we've got grounds to not award no. to them. So. Any other discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The uh, bid is awarded to Hosier Worldwide <coughs> in the amount of one million one sixty three one hundred dollars. Thank you, commissioners. All right, we have a time certain closed session scheduled at ten thirty. Uh, with permission, or if there's no objection, I'd like to move to item number thirteen, administration. Now, if that's okay with everyone. Sure. Any yep. objections? Okay, uh, let's go to the 13th administration. Mr. Meyer, please. Well, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the first time is county board minutes for September 10th. I move. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> no. The minutes are the motion carried. The minutes of September 10th are approved as printed. Next are the bills for the two weeks indicated. Move to approve the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there just discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The bills are approved. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, uh, tab 16 in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. Just have informational items for the board today, uh, starting with the filling a clerical specialist uh, three position in our community corrections area. Then we also had a promotion uh, from a probation officer one to probation officer two in our community corrections area. Then we had change of employment status for a uh, probation officer one who was in a temporary role to a probation officer one that's not a temporary, so just uh, shifting laterally that position. Then we received a resignation of assistant county attorney, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that assistant county attorney. We did fill an office coordinator in our human services department. Then we did receive a resignation of a license center specialist, and so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. There is a promotion uh, in our uh, public works area of a maintenance technician one to a maintenance technician two, and so we've initiated recruitment to refill that maintenance technician one position. So those are the changes in our human uh, resources area. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have on any of those items. Uh, any questions? questions. Mm -hmm. Thank Question. you. All right. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Chair and Commissioners, uh, tab 17 in your packet uh, deals with the proposed levy. Um, there's a resolution that's been required by Minnesota statute certifying the proposed 2025 property tax levy. Uh, Blue Earth County staff began working on the budget in April of this year. Meetings with the department heads were held in June and actually this year extended into July because of uh, the situation at the dam. Uh, we worked with uh, through work sessions with the Board of Commissioners uh, throughout the summer resulting in a proposed levy of $47,835,825. This proposed levy is 6% increase over the levy that was assessed in 2024. Residential property owners will likely see the county portion of their property tax increase between 2 and 5% from last year's tax bill due to changes in the homestead credit that was uh, part of a legislative change. Commercial, industrial, and apartment properties are likely to see an increase between 5 and 6%. Agricultural property owners will likely see between a 5 and 6% increases due to increasing valuations. But some agricultural properties will actually see a decrease as a result of some legislative changes. The county's tax rate will increase from 34.52% to 36.46%. 
We still are seeing increased pressure on wages uh, due to a challenging <coughs> labor market, uh, service demands that remain high, and inflationary, inflationary impacts on operational costs all have contributed to uh, the level of levy requested. At this time, I'm uh, recommending the 2025 proposed property tax levy of $47,835,825 be certified to the Blue Earth County Finance Director. All right, let's uh, get this on the table for discussion. I'll move approval. Second. And a motion and a second discussion on the proposed levy. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chair, but just a comment. Uh, as has already been mentioned by administration that this is a long process. We took uh, many work sessions to get to where we are today. Um, I think the levy of 6% is something I can support just because of the unknown factors we have coming up with the Rapid End Dam, the highway building, and as uh, Mr. Meyer reported already about the fact of the just the cost of the county government going up with the labor and all of the resources that we have to provide for people. So I will be supporting this today, Mr. Chair. Other discussion? Yeah. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed no. The motion carried. The 2025 propo proposed levy um, has been set. Budget, please. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, um, tab 18 in the packet is the 2025 uh, proposed budget. Minnesota statute 375A.06 re requires the county administrator to prepare and submit an annual budget and long range capital expenditure program to the county board. As I mentioned previously, staff have been working on the proposed budget since April of this year and it has been reviewed numerous times in work sessions with the county board. The 2025 budget is uh, considerably higher than it was in 2024, with most of that increase um, the result of the planned construction of the new public works facility. As such, I'm recommending the approval of a resolution regarding the 2025 proposed budget, which projects expenditures at $150,000 $453,618. I would also point out that the public hearing to discuss the budget will be held on December 3rd, 2024 at 6 p.m. here in the historic courthouse. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second discussion. Um, Mr. Chair, again, a lot of work and effort went into this, so thank you to the staff and Bob and his team for putting this budget together. Uh, again, I think the key thing to remember is the unknowns of the dam and the, the fact that we are going to be building a new public works building this year. I think it's just uh, prudent that we build a good budget. Agree. Other discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, the budget of $150,453,618 is adopted and certified to the County Finance Director. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, tab 19 in your packet is a memo regarding an agreement with Vine. Um, you may recall back in 2012, Blue Earth County entered into a right to re purchase and utility easement agreement with Vine, whereby the county retained a right to repurchase the Vine property on or after September 15th, 2032, along with some other provisions in that agreement. Under the right to repurchase provision, um, the county would have to provide an 18 month notice if we wanted to uh, repurchase uh, the old Nichols building and we would then be required to provide um, the lesser of the um, of a facility of equal size and quality or the appraised value of the uh, vine property or the value of all improvements to uh, the vine property i was recently approached by vine indicating um, 
that they desired an amendment to that agreement as it was posing um, some obstacle to some planned um, improvements to that property. Um, some of their donors were concerned about that provision. And so um, staff reviewed the original gr agreement and feel that it is unlikely that the county would need to invoke that right to repurchase provision. Uh, the original agreement does still provide a first right of purchase should Vine put the property up for sale. And that provision will remain in place um, despite this amendment. So um, just um, proposing to remove that um, right of repurchase um, in 2020, 2032. And so staff are recommending an amendment to that agreement. I would move to approve. Second it. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? <coughs> We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Tab 20 in your packet is a resolution regarding um, authorizing the sheriff to enter into grant agreements for uh, the towards zero death and DWI <coughs> officer provisions. This is a resolution that has come before the board in prior years and um, like I say, grants the sheriff the authority to sign those agreements with um, funding uh, provided by the state. So. Again, bringing it forward for the board's consideration today. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> no. Motion carried. The resolution is approved. Tab 21 in your packet is a revised South Central Workforce Joint Powers Agreement. This is an agreement that comes around every four years or so um, with the uh, South Central Workforce Development Area. Uh, we reviewed the uh, changes to this Joint Powers Agreement. They're very minor changes, just uh, a few language changes, but no substantial changes to the intent of the agreement. And so bringing it here for the board's consideration today and uh, with the recommendation of approval. I'll move approval. Second it. Okay, it's been properly moved and second. Discussion? Uh, the only thing I will tell you, Mr. Chair, is uh, out of the nine, we need, I think, eight, seven, six or seven are in already, so we're one and a couple more. So they'll all be done. I sit on this committee. Thank you for that. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The agreement is approved. Item number 22 in the packet is a request for a temporary uh, liquor license from the Locale Brewing Company. Uh, this is a, a planned event out at the old uh, Poor Farm Studios, and uh, I believe it's in early October. And so I'm uh, bringing it here for the board's consideration today. I'll move that. Second it. Got a motion and a second. Discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The temporary liquor license is approved. We'll go to uh, tab 14, commissioners, uh, or item 14, excuse me, commissioners reports on committees. And if you remember from the last board meeting, for clarity to the chair, we've taken out <laughs> all the surprise factor. So we will start with Commissioner Brunder. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I actually had a relatively quiet couple weeks. Uh, we had uh, several meetings with uh, SECB and trying to get some planning stuff done for that, the Statewide Emergency Community Commission Board. And then I had some planning and zoning issues to deal with, and then several items uh, pertaining to some ditch projects and some gravel road issues and uh, wear and tear on the gravel roads is kind of hard on us this time of the year. So that's my report, Mr. Chair. Mark, please. Okay, September 10th after the board meeting had a work session and Wednesday the 11th we did have a Micah Zoom meeting and um, 
Then we had um, uh, Blue Ridge County. I went to the Blue Ridge County uh, Park uh, celebration of the, the uh, their new parking lot. Uh, There's quite a few people there. Former Commissioner Drew Campbell was there. It was, it was a good event. And uh, Friday the 20th, they'd have an All Seasons Arena meeting and uh, got updated on the uh, construction progress there, the, the building inside. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Patty, please. All right. Uh, September 10th was the work session. The 11th through the 13th was AMC Policy Conference in Alexandria. Uh, the 17th, we had the NACO Regional Call. On the 19th, I had a TDS board meeting. And on the 23rd, I had my NACO FIGA committee. That ends my report. Thank you. Thanks. Well, um, I also attended the work session after our last board meeting. Um, the next three days, we had the AMC Fall Policy conference which I attended uh, the next week uh, myself and uh, Ryan Tilgis flew out to Washington DC for the Transportation Alliance fly-in um, absolutely thought it was probably one of the best fly-ins that I've been at over the course of my 14 years uh, we had some very good conversations with representative Finstead and uh, Senator Klobuchar, and also talked uh, well with uh, Senator Smith's staff in reference to uh, the FEMA issues that we've been having over uh, this last summer. And uh, hopefully we're gonna get something out of that. Um, I, I wanna give kudos to uh, Mr. Tilgis. He does an amazing job and helps, helps the county a lot uh, his his expertise in uh, uh, roads and bridges and uh, the dam especially uh, really shows. Um, let's see. Yesterday I had a Transportation Alliance Board of Directors meeting, and that's the end of my report, sir. Thank you. Um, from my perspective, I also attended the work session, the AMC fall uh, policy conference as well as the uh, Minnesota Rural Counties meeting up there. On the 16th, I participated in the Blue Earth One Watershed, One Plan Policy Committee meeting. Um, the 19th, attended the Township Officers Quarterly meeting. On the 20th in the morning, we had the Lesseur One Watershed, One Plan Policy Committee meeting. And then in the afternoon was the Gaberba uh, Greater Blue Earth River Basin Authority Policy Committee meeting. And then on the 23rd, um, we had the Rural Minnesota Energy Board meeting, and I participated in the NACO Ag Policy Monthly Update Call. And that concludes my report. The next item on the uh, agenda is uh, agenda item number 11. Um, Agenda item 11 is a motion to go into closed session time certain at 1030. To discuss the case, Patrick A. Lease, Lynn M. Kuzman Lease versus Mankato Township. The open meeting law, Minnesota statute, section 13D.05, subdivision 3B, allows the Board of Commissioners to close the meeting for the following purpose, among others to discuss pending litigation under the attorney-client privilege. Staff will ask the board to close the meeting to meet with its attorney regarding the county's options for in this case. There's a need for absolute confidentiality because the county's position would be compromised if such discussions took place in public and could be overheard by the other party. According to persuade to the law, I have cited, I will hereby entertain a motion that this meeting will reconvene in closed session pursuant to the attorney-client privilege. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. And somebody has to remind me, is that debatable? Does, does there, do I call for discussion when I close it? Uh, no. 
Okay, so then I will ask, are we ready to vote? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion is carried. Uh, we will go into closed session, time certain, at 10.30. Uh, we will be recessed until then. Yeah. And that will be in this room. Uh, fireplace room. Fireplace, fireplace room. room. Fireplace 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 room. Yeah.